Hello, I'm Arthur Holmes. Let me tell you my live story. Here's an interesting story about me. It was approximately 1910 or 1911, 12 to 13 years old, when I went out to work. The first time that I remember of working out for somebody, was for a fellow about 1-2 mile east of Kennebec SD. He gave me 50 cents a day. I was with him three summers I believe. I would go to school in the winter time. I did a man's work there. I drove four horses in the field and whatever there was to do, I did it. We put in 10 hour days those days. He would rap on my door about 4.30 in the morning. I would get up and go to the chores, then eat breakfast and go out and get the horses ready and be in the field by 7 a.m., and be in the fields till 6 at night. We put in long days. Then in the summertime between jobs when I wasn't working, I'd do odd jobs around town for different people. Whatever there was to do, I'd do, to get a little spending money for myself. And between jobs some of the farmers were called away from home for jury duty or sickness or something else, and they would have me come and do the chores. I did this for a good many of them. Some of them, twice. I do the chores like milk cows, feed the stock and stuff like that. I'd usually get 50 cents a day for that. When I wasn't doing that, I'd go out and break horses for different ones. I'd get $10 a head to break a horse to ride. It would usually take me two weeks to get them gentle enough for him and the kids to ride, that way I'd have a horse of my own to ride to for myself, so helped me too. One summer I went out and drove tractor and broke prairie for a guy 40 miles north of Chamberlain, South Dakota. The old man who owned the land was going to seed it to broom corn and start a broom factory out there, but he never did. I don't know if the old man went broke, but this guy I worked for didn't get any money, and I didn't get any money for that summer's work. Then I worked for my brother-in-law, Howard Pease in the garage at Reliance SD. I was with him a year or two, helping around the garage and mostly I did house wiring. He had a light plant there in town, just a little town, and he sold light plants, and I'd go out in the country and wire houses for the farmers out there and naturally they would want their barns and everything lit up you know. I wired houses for several around town too. He had the first light plant so it was the first light they ever had in those little towns. Then when I got through there, I went back to Kennebec and worked for his sister's husband in another garage. I worked there all summer or so. I remember I worked one winter for a sheepman there. He had a couple of 3,000 head of sheep out north of Kennebec, about 3 or 4 miles. We would haul one load of hay one day and a tank of water the next day out to feed the sheep. Boy I put in an awful cold winter out there that winter. It was over 30 days that it never got above zero in the daytime and really cold at night. Then one time a guy by the name of Pat Brady and I bought a tractor, and we were going to break prairie. There was lots of jobs for people there in Lyman County, with land homesteaders and farmers coming and wanting to break up the prairie, and had to break up so much prairie to prove up, so we were going to do that so I think we did one job about 30 acres, maybe not that much. It wasn't too much. Anyway, we had a heck of a time. We couldn't keep the thing cool, got so hot it wouldn't even run. It was one of the first tractors. You know, when they first started to build farm tractors. It was a Titan built by International Harvester. The same one that makes them now. It didn't have a radiator, just had about a 10-gallon tank set up on top and we filled that with water and it just wouldn't keep it cool, so we turned it back to this guy. Hi, I'm Arthur Holmes Part 3. I would like you to know a little bit about my life. There was another guy had an old Power City tractor, a great big old thing, big as a steam tractor. It was electric gasoline machine that someone had it out there in the country trying to break prairie with it and it quit on him and he couldn't get it started. It was my brother-in-law's brother that owned it so he had me go out there. I was out there about 10 days working on the thing. I got it to run a little bit but couldn't get it to run long enough to ever use it. I don't think he ever did use it. That was the last I heard of it. The last I knew it was still setting out there on the prairie. Then one time I wasn't doing anything and we were living there in Kennebec at the time, the folks were, so I used to drive the mail route out south of town for a fellow by the name of Ed Egan. He was the town marshal and he had this mail route too, so I and my dad used to drive the mail route for him quite a lot of the time. I'd drive it by myself when my dad didn't want to. I did a little everything like that around town, like I said, I did anything I could find to do. Then one time during the flu epidemic I drove the doctor, as I was working there in another garage in Kennebec, for a man by the name of Booth. I drove a delivery for him that took people like salesmen and land agents. I drove the doctor quite a lot at night, and at night I tended to switch for operator when they got sick. 
that's when they had an awful time with everyone having the flu. I don't remember what year that was, must have been about 1918, I guess. I can remember 1910. I don't remember much about Haley Comet, but I can remember my folks and others doing a lot of talking about it. I was 12 years old. The city used to put up ice in the big ice house to store and sell ice all summer, so I helped put up ice in the winter for the city. I know one winter after I got done putting up ice, I suppose I had lots of money, or I felt pretty staky for them days, so I took a trip to Iowa. I went down there and saw some of my uncles, and then I got cleared down in Missouri and on my way back I stopped in Des Moines, Iowa. I had a cousin, a widow woman, and she had a boy of about 10 I guess at that time. I was about 15, anyway she was having an awful time and didn't know what to do with him, so I brought him back with me. I thought I was a big shot and was going to help her out. I didn't have money to get him back. I wrote a check to get money enough to get him back and then I had to go to the bank and straighten it out after I got home, but they took care of it for me. I didn't have a nickel in the bank, never had. Anyway, I got by with that. He stayed out with my folks and then I can't remember but my folks took care of him after that and he finally went back to his mother. That was a heck of a deal. Then it wasn't long till I worked for an old fellow by the name of Joe Cranny, out south of Kennebec, one season. He was a heck of a nice old guy too. An old Irishman. He had a pair of mules we drove in the field. The first day I went out there, I can't remember if it was noon or six o'clock now, but when it got quitting time, those darn mules headed for home and wouldn't stop. I couldn't do anything with them. I hollered stop and they did stop, but they wouldn't go back around that field. So I got them home and I thought that I was quitting too early but old Joe just laughed and said, no those mules know when it's quitting time. He would tell me that Saturday, he would let me off every Saturday afternoon, you don't have to come, you stay overnight with your folks, come home tomorrow would be okay. Finally, then I bummed my way out to Montana. In the spring of 1917 I went out with another guy by the name of Ed Lewis, his wife was in Seattle, so we bummed our way out to Seattle. Stayed out there all winter till about Christmas time. I had my 19th birthday in Seattle and came back to Kennebec rest of winter. I did what I could for work in Seattle. I dug a basement for one guy from under his house and worked odd and end jobs. Worked at a packing house for a while, worked for a streetcar company. For a while I was a trolley man on a work train and I finally got a job in the shipyards for a while. That's when Walter Smith came out there and we both worked in the shipyards until I got word something about the draft. I'd signed up before I left home, registered for the army. I got some word, anyhow I went home, but I never got called, well I guess I went home to take my physical, went home for something anyway. I got called for the army, I had just got my notice a day or so before the armistice as signed, so I never had to go to the army. I guess I went back to work at the garage and different things for a while. Then I went to work for Ben Wells, he lived out west of Kennebec, for one summer then my dad got to putting up hay for different ones around there for ranchers and one banker. We put up hay for him once or twice. We would mow it and stack it in the fields for so much a ton. I used to go out there alone and my older brother and set a camp. We did that and one thing and then when I wasn't working I would go out and stay with Bill Hunt. He always liked to have someone around. He moved to Jones County and I'd go with him. I helped him build his house. I worked and stayed with him two or three years. When we got married in July 1921, I rented a farm for a guy in Midland, South Dakota, Jack Buchanan. I farmed his place one year this was between Lottie's folks and town. Those were dry years. In those years, nobody made a thing. I never made a thing farming. Then in 1926, I built that canvas cover for that old Model T Ford truck. Myself, Lottie, Blanche, Lawrence, Cleo was a baby, and Clara, Lottie's sister with us out to Meade County. We had an awful time with that old Model T. There wasn't any roads, just wagon tracks, but we made it. I had an uncle out there, and a cousin there, that was a carpenter and a good handyman. 
I had hard wheels on that truck, but I had some different wheels and tires with me, but the hubs wouldn't fit, so he fixed the wheels so I could use the other tires that were soft and much better riding. I worked a few days at a garage in Sturgis, South Dakota and a mill for a while that summer. There was a carpenter there in Rapid City that I knew back Lyman Company. He came to see me one day to help him, as he had more work than he could do. I worked for him for the rest of the year, I guess, then he ran out of work. I had bought some cream in Kennebec, one time, so I had my license for testing cream. There was an ad in the paper, they wanted someone to buy cream for Hanford Company in Buffalo Gap, so we moved down there and liked to about starve to death. I worked on the railroad there for a while. Mabel and Cliff Edwards came down there. I worked in an elevator a while, and then Cliff, and I got a job down at Pringle, South Dakota in a rock quarry. We worked there all one winter. The guy that we were working for went broke at that. We had an awful time trying to get our money, but we did get most of it finally. Then we all went down to Midland, South Dakota again where Lottie's folks lived. Mabel and Cliff went down to his folks down by Kappa SD. I worked at whatever there was to do. I broke prairie for one of Lottie's neighbors for a while. I don't know how many acres, a few with the horses and stuff, but had an awful time. Didn't make any money on that job either. Finally in 1927 Roland and I went to Nebraska. We worked all that fall till middle of winter, and then we went home and moved Lottie, and you kids down to Kappa, and I worked at a ranch a couple miles out of town for old Cruis Madison. Cliff and I both worked out there, and stayed out there by ourselves. It was a pretty good size ranch about 1,500 head of cattle I guess. We hauled hay to them and fed them for that winter and the next spring. He had a place out north of town, Kappa, that he wanted to go out there. He had a big truck that he let me use to move out there. I had to fix up this house. The floor was all shot. I had to put a new floor in. He had a little land that I farmed. I planted corn, but it dried up. So I moved down on a place about a mile from Barney's, my father-in-law. Didn't do any farming there. In the fall Roland and I went back down to Nebraska. Lyle Hunt went with us. We worked there all fall. I had worked for Gilbert Olson both summers I'd been there before. He wanted me to come down and farm one of the farms that he had been letting out on shares. So with Gilbert's truck, Roland, and I loaded up Lottie and you kids and moved to Hay Springs, Nebraska. Must have been late fall or winter 1929. Marvin was born in April 1930. Then we moved out to the farm. I farmed there until spring of 1935, when I made that red trailer house, size 8 feet by 16 feet. We started with my brother Johnny Holmes. He had a Chevy truck, a four-cylinder to pull my trailer and we were all going to Montana. I was to pay the fare for him to pull it. It took three days to get to Casper, Wyoming. When we got to Casper, we decided it wasn't going to work. Johnny's truck just wasn't going to pull the trailer all that wind. It was the time of the dust storms in that part of the country. When we stopped for the night in Douglas, Wyoming, just before we got into Casper, I went uptown to see if we could trade the truck and my car for something that would pull the trailer. Somehow or other Lawrence heard Johnny and I talking about what we would do, and he said to Iva, John's wife, we almost traded your truck off today. I had planned for him to have the truck when we got to Montana, but Iva wouldn't wait for my explanation and was real mad at me so we split up. That's when we stayed in Casper a couple of weeks. Johnny took off in his truck and they managed to make it from Transit House to the next that the government had set up to put you up for a night or so and give you enough gas and money to get to the next town or so. And that's the way they got to Hot Springs, Montana. I traded my car at Casper for a big old six-cylinder Nash car and I hooked up to the trailer, and I had no trouble at all pulling the trailer. When we arrived in Hot Springs, I worked for WPA or same as WPA. Also the forest service in the summer. In late summer I drove truck on the road building job. By this time we had moved to Plains, Montana in time for the kids to start school. They had finished school at spring in Hot Springs. I worked on the road job until 1938. 
then when I wasn't working on WPA, Ed Barton and I cut wood. He had a truck and a drag saw, and we would go out and cut wood and haul it in. I finally got a hold of a drag saw and made a trailer out of casings from under my trailer house. Lottie and I would go out where the logging crews had left logs laying around, and I would make skids. Made kind of a V-shaped bead on the trailer and rolled those logs up those skids to get a load, take them home and saw them up by hand. I would sell what I could of it. In that year of 1938 I went to work for Dick Breidenstein, tending bar. I worked for him off and on when I wasn't working on a road job or something else. I went to Hot Springs and had a cocktail lounge there in 1943. I was there when Larry went into the service. I sold that and went back to Plains and went back to work for Dick. I could always go to work for Dick. He always wanted me. In 1944, we went to Salmon, Idaho and ran a cocktail lounge there. Came back to Plains after one season. Tended bar in Hot Springs that winter. Then back to Plains again working for Dick when Lottie went to Alaska and found work. In 1952 Marvin and I flew to Alaska. We worked up there that summer and I came home to have a hernia removed in Virginia Mason Hospital in Seattle. When I was well enough I went back to Plains again to work for Dick from February until April of 1953, when I went back to Anchorage. I worked at a army base in Whittier, Alaska until 1964. We came to Bellingham, W.A. I was retired for a year, but felt like working some more, so spent another year in Alaska. In 1967, we bought a place in Cedra Woolley, Washington on Cook Road, about a mile from our son Frank. This has been our home since. I now live in a double-wide mobile home and rent from my son Frank. Lottie passed away August 1986.